today and very honored to have Professor Daisho here from Waseda University. Um, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Citrus, uh, the uh, Consulate of Japan in San Francisco. Thank you very much for all the arrangements and there's going to be a reception afterwards sponsored by them, so thank you very much. Um, also, I'd like to thank Mechanical Engineering for uh, many of the students and uh, faculty are here, very interested in this topic. Um, and uh, I also want to make a few notes that uh, there are questionnaires that the consulate asks you to fill out to uh, get your response on how you felt the talk was. Um, and there are handouts on the talk. Right now, some of you have them. They are the second part of the talk, and we are printing out the first part. So you will have them by the end of the talk. Um, uh, let me first also say thank you to the Citrus staff for all their help in, in putting this together. Uh, and now first I'm going to introduce Professor uh, Li Wei Lin, who is going to introduce the Consul General uh, from the Japanese Consulate. Thank you. So my job here today is very simple, very short. I'm going to have the honor to uh, introduce uh, Nagamini-san, uh, the General Consul uh, of Japan in San Francisco, on behalf of the Mechanical Engineering Department here. And uh, he will give a very short, uh, brief talk before the real talk. Let's welcome him. Well, thank you, uh, Professor Lin, for a uh, uh, introduction. Um, uh, it is a great pleasure for me. I'm the Consul General of Japan. Well, not quite the General Consul. If you say General Consul, it sounds like a, a attorney. I'm <laughs> I wish I would be a Tony as well as a diplomat, but I, I'm a Consul General of Japan in San Francisco. Um, I'm very glad to sponsor today's uh, uh, talks by uh, uh, distinguished Professor uh, Yasuhiro Daisho later. And this event is in collaboration with the uh, Citrus. I don't need to uh, spell out the Citrus from Berkeley. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Sastry, uh, Dr. Wright, Dr. St. George, Mr. Inoue, and uh, virtually everyone at the Citrus uh, who made this event possible. Well, uh, today's topic is uh, related to global warming. And global warming has grown to be a critical issue uh, that needs to be addressed uh, by the whole world. To take an action, every human being who shares this awareness must work together through the exchange of information and the technological collaboration. People from all over the world have started to take the first step uh, towards this international uh, goal. Uh, last summer, Japan took the initi initiative with the Cool Earth 50 proposition to halve global greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Uh, the idea was shared in the G8 summit uh, last year. Uh, then in December last year, at the United Nations uh, uh, COP13 summit in Bali, as you may know, the nations of the world agreed to the Bali uh, roadmap towards a new framework of greenhouse gas emissions reduction that would further develop the ongoing efforts under the Kyoto Protocol. To continue working together, uh, towards a new environmental outlook. Japanese Prime Minister Fukuda himself has expressed his firm resolution to work towards the establishment of the new framework and uh, announced Japan's national target for reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. Japan will host the G8 summit this summer, coming summer. The global warming issue will be a focus of the discussion. On a more local scale, California, of course, is known for its environmentally uh, conscious uh, uh, people and the go government alike. And progressive measures such as AB 32 are only one part of the state's leading uh, role on environmental issues in the United States. Therefore, we are very much looking forward to working closely with the state of California uh, to that e end. In this connection, uh, I'm very much honored to have uh, uh, Professor uh, Yasiro Daisho uh, this, this afternoon, 
who specializes in uh, automotive engineering and environmental and energy issues. I hope that this uh, presentation will help all of us gain a deeper appreciation and uh, understanding of efforts by countries such as Japan to address global climate change. Uh, to continue the spirit of uh, today's talk, the Consul General of Japan in San Francisco uh, and the UC Center of uh, Sacramento will host a seminar on March 26th and 27th uh, in, uh, in the state capital uh, where the Japanese policymakers and corporate leaders will come to discuss environmental policies and its environmentally friendly technologies. So this afternoon uh, is going to be the first step and then uh, towards the end of this month we are going to have uh, another step forward. We hope that uh, these events uh, will offer opportunities for the exchange of ideas and information between Japan and California. Um, so I very much look forward to this uh, first step this afternoon. In concluding, the concert would like to thank all the local uh, organizations who supported uh, this program, including the Japan Society of Northern California, the Japan, uh, Japanese Universities Network in the Bay Area, uh, Jumba, the Silicon Valley Japanese Enter Entrepreneurs Network, uh, SVGen, and the Japanese Bio Community, JBC, the Japan Society for the Promotion of Sciences, JSPS, and the Center for Japanese Studies at UC Berkeley. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Daisho. Uh, thank you. I just want to have one more professor come and introduce Professor Daisho. Uh, this is Professor Bob Dibble, uh, Robert Dibble from Mechanical Engineering. After that great speech, they really don't need me. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I was uh, in, invited to uh, give this uh, uh, introduction uh, to our distinguished speaker, uh, largely because the department knows I work with engines and uh, diesels and combustion and so on, and uh, not surprisingly, uh, we discover that our paths have crossed several times in the last few years. Uh, to the graduate students, uh, I'm one of the last st uh, students who, first of all, uh, I t uh, graduate students always taught undergraduate students how a slide rule works, okay? So in 1973, I taught the last slide rule class, okay? Uh, I was also at a department of uh, chemical engineering in Wisconsin that required a foreign language as part of the Ph.D., uh, so uh, I, I thought I would do something unusual, so I studied Japanese for <laughs> two years, okay? And uh, I, I enjoyed tremendously learning uh, to study Japanese, and I notice I didn't say that I learned Japanese. I learned to study Japanese and, and look at it. And uh, uh, so a wonderful experience, and of course engineering schools no longer require a foreign language requirement, and, and that, that's too bad because I tell you it's a very, it was an enriching experience that I, I'm grateful for. Uh, by the way, after I got my Ph.D., I did go to Japan, and, uh, and people ask, well, what was the meeting, or why going? And, and, and the best description I could tell somebody is I was an American hippie traveling in Japan, okay? And uh, I, I stayed at youth hostels uh, yeah. the whole time, okay? And uh, youth hostels then uh, didn't have that many uh, foreigners, mm -hmm. and uh, so the only thing in English uh, in the youth hostel that I could read was a dictionary. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know so you've got to be pretty bored to read the dictionary, but we had that from time to time. Okay, so so over the years, though, what happens is I've b visited Japan on many occasions. Uh, I'm a little bit better than most on uh, trying to read uh, what's the station to get off the subway and navigate my way through uh, Tokyo and so on. Uh, but as you've just heard. Almost everybody I talked to in Japan could speak English far better than I could speak Japanese. So as a consequence, my Japanese just faded and faded and faded, okay? And so uh, I thought I'd be big and brave and introduce you in Japanese, but I gave that idea up quickly, okay? And so, uh, uh, so now, having given my speech, it's time for me to introduce you, Professor. <clears throat> uh, uh, professor Daisho is a professor of engineering at the famous Wasada University in Tokyo. His areas of expertise include automotive engineering, developing and evaluating electric and hybrid vehicles, something I don't do, but here, low emission diesel and alternate fuel engines, which is something we do do in our lab, okay? And because remember, my degrees were in chemical engineering, so I've worked a lot with fuels. Uh, 
Uh, it says here, Professor Dyshaw is a member of many councils and com committees, something I don't do, okay, <laughs> and uh, in the Japanese government, including uh, the Central Environmental Council, Ministry of the Environment, and Council for Transportation Policies, Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport, and a Committee for the Next Generation of Vehicles, Fuels, and the Ministry of the Economy. Now, this is important stuff. If you bother to look out in the streets of California, you're going to see that a good fraction of the automobiles are from Japan. And that's because Japan took an early lead on producing environmentally friendly mo uh, mo automobiles and, uh, and also, of course, automobiles that have high fuel economy. And uh, they took an early lead on that and uh, they intend to keep it. And uh, they're doing very well at that. Uh, last, uh, Professor Daisho has contributed to the establishment of the motor vehicle uh, emissions and fuel economy standards in Japan and they are tougher than they are in California. Uh, and it, 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 a fact, okay. Uh, he was executive vice president of the Society of Automotive Engineers of Japan from 2004 to 2006 and that m meant that we knew each other because I went yeah. to the joint Japan SAE meeting and the American SAE meeting that was in Yokohama, Japan when he just became vice president. So uh, I don't think he remembers me at that meeting, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so with no further, further ado, would uh, we please welcome our speaker with the uh, usual applause. Thank you. You have a microphone, so you don't need this. I'll give this to uh, you. Okay. May I get started? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Nagamine, Professor Dippo, uh, thank you for the kind introduction, and uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, the advanced technology associated with energy and the environment, uh, focusing on uh, 22, the year 22 and beyond. <laughs> and uh, please uh, be patient with uh, Japanese bad English for the next 45 year, uh, five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> OK? So and uh, I would like to uh, have uh, questions from you after my talk. Okay, I would like to talk about future regulations and the standard of uh, motor vehicles uh, on emissions and fuel economy. And uh, I will introduce uh, advanced energy, uh, engine technologies and after treatment system. Then I will talk about the possible alternative fuels and energy in the future. And finally, I will uh, introduce my own perspectives on future vehicle and fuel technologies. Okay, uh, you can take a look at uh, the website uh, provided by Ministry of Environment of Japan. And uh, this, this dot shows the uh, suspended uh, particulate matters concentration uh, hour by hour. And some uh, places uh, we are suffering from the uh, air uh, pollution of uh, SPM, suspended particulate matter, as shown here. Okay, but uh, almost all mega cities in the world uh, they are suffering from uh, air pollution. Okay, so we have to overcome such problems in the near future. Maybe in developing uh, countries, uh, they will suffer from uh, such air pollution beyond 2010. But uh, in motorized country and developed country, uh, they will be able to overcome such uh, air pollution okay, around 2010 or a little bit uh, later. Okay, so, okay, uh, speaking of gasoline engines emission control system, uh, gasoline vehicles are achieving almost zero emission levels by seeing country reducing cold start and warm up emissions. Okay, uh, as shown here, uh, the engine utilizes very sophisticated 
electronic control unit, and uh, it utilized two catalysts uh, to reduce uh, em emissions uh, during cold start and uh, warm up conditions. Okay, this is uh, these are three monkeys suffering from bad smell from diesel, bad uh, smoke, and noise. So we have to uh, solve these problems. Okay, and this figure compared the emissions standard of uh, Japan and EU and the states. As you can see, we will be, oops, can I use a point, laser point or something? Okay, ah. we will be able to have a very low, oh thank you, thanks a lot. Okay, this is uh, US 2010. It's a very low level for heavy duty diesel vehicles. Okay, and uh, Japanese uh, regulations will be here, and Euro 6 will be here. So diesel emissions will be reduced a lot around uh, 2010 to 20, 2050. Okay, and we need. Uh, international harmonization associated with such uh, emissions to be reduced okay? using the same uh, testing procedures and regulation level. Okay, this is uh, the typical uh, advanced diesel uh, emission control system including turbocharger and exhaust gas recirculation and after treatment systems. And uh, high pressure injection system is a key technology to reduce uh, particulate matters and uh, also NOx emissions. Okay, this is a uh, oops, common rail system uh, developed by Bosch. Uh, this uh, injection system can provide a extremely high uh, pressure fuel Okay, up to 220 megapascal to minimize the particle of the fuel. Okay, and uh, such system can provide uh, multiple uh, injection, uh, as shown here. Okay, so it can control emissions, uh, keeping the high efficiency of the diesel. To avoid soot and NOx emissions, uh, rain combustion is very, very useful. And we are trying to uh, find the best condition to control uh, soot and NOx emissions simultaneously, avoiding such a uh, peninsula. Okay. And HCCI is a very, very hot topic uh, because uh, it can reduce PM and NOx simultaneously, uh, achieving the very, very lean combustion. Okay. Uh, as you see here, uh, injection uh, is made very early uh, from the top dead center. So lean combustion will take place as shown here. But uh, this combustion type of combustion is very, very explosive. So such combustion can be utilized at low load conditions only. And we have to be careful about the destruction of the, of the engine if uh, we utilize HCCI at a heavy load and high speed, okay? So precise combustion control uh, system must be developed. 
to achieve such uh, combustion. Okay, and uh, in other words, we call HCC, uh, PCCI premixed charge compression ignition. Okay, and to achieve such combustion, we have different type of method, as shown here: early injection, late injection, and low compression ratio and variable valve mechanisms. Okay, uh, in my laboratory, we are investigating uh, such uh, combustion concept uh, using a very <coughs> uh, sophisticated single cinder research engine, as shown here. And uh, it can uh, change the valve timing uh, using such complicated mechanism. And uh, we are developing the uh, spray dynamic dynamics model as shown here. Okay, this is an experimental uh, observation, and this is a predicted uh, fuel uh, concentration and uh, evaporated uh, fuel are shown, is shown here. And uh, okay, this is the. Uh, diesel engine, uh, and we are developing uh, the new maker model to predict uh, such combustion processes, okay, as shown here. And uh, as you can see, uh, exhaust gas recirculation uh, it can be utilized to, uh, such, uh, to achieve such combustion. Uh, we use late intake valve closing to realize the lower compression ratio, keeping the expansion uh, ratio constant, okay, to ensure the thermal efficiency, as shown here. So very, very premixed and uh, lean combustion can take place, as shown here. Okay, so in summary, uh, we are trying to develop and utilize numerical method to, for engine design or uh, to, in order to understand the phenomena of such combustion. It's very useful method and uh, uh, hopefully uh, by using such model we can investigate the new engine concept as shown here. Okay, this is the DPF system, and this is uh, consists. Uh, co this uh, such system include a ceramic filter to trap uh, diesel particulate matters. Okay, as shown here, and uh, this system uh, requires a high temperature conditions to reburn accumulated soot on the filter. So, okay, and this is a, a selective catalytic reduction system to reduce NOx, shown here. Urea solution is necessary to produce ammonia. Ammonia is a very, very strong uh, effect on reducing uh, NOx in the exhaust gas. Okay, and this is uh, DPNR uh, developed by Toyota uh, several years ago. And this is a very compact uh, NOx and PM re reduction system, as shown here. NOx can be stored uh, on the uh, catalyst and reduced by rich condition operation, uh, which means uh, fewer rich condition, okay? And also PM can be oxidized, as shown here, simultaneously. Okay, this is uh, the Honda's uh, new Denox catalyst. In the catalyst, ammonia can be produced and adsorbed in, on the uh, catalyst. So you don't have to use urea solution, okay? If you would like to use uh, urea solution, you need a tank, okay? 
uh, for storing urea solution. But uh, this system uh, doesn't require any sub-tank for urea solution because uh, ammonia can be produced inside. Okay. So this is a comparison of NOx storage type uh, catalyst and urea SCL system. Uh, durability, uh, from the viewpoint of durability, uh, urea uh, SCR is much better than NOx storage uh, reduction system. But uh, we need a refueling station for urea solution, okay, in addition to the ordinary fuel uh, infrastructure as well. Okay, so uh, anyway, we in the future, we will have uh, such complicated uh, combination of both DPF and Linux catalyst. So much complicated, and uh, it will cost a lot. So uh, automakers are trying to reduce the cost and improving durability of such type of uh, after treatment system. As shown here, uh, so uh, in the very near future, we will move from MAD based, MAP based control to model based control system to reduce NOx and PM at the same time. And model based control is much simpler than MAP based control because uh, uh, it is based on simplified mathematic models and or physical models for transient conditions. Okay? It, it is very important uh, control idea to, for transient conditions of the engine. Okay? And uh, we are reducing sulfur content in the fuel as shown here. 10 ppm, uh, less than 10 ppm, PM sulfur is now introduced uh, in the market in Japan and in the States and in Europe, as shown here. And uh, in Japan, we are discussing the future fuel economy standard for heavy duty vehicles. Okay, this is the first trial in the world. Okay, and. Uh, 12.2% fuel economy improvement will be required by fiscal year uh, 2015. Okay. As shown here, uh, depending on the uh, vehicle category, we have a different uh, standard as shown here. But, uh, okay. And speaking of a passenger car fuel economy standard, we will have a very stringent uh, target as shown here. Uh, it seems very difficult for European uh, automakers to achieve uh, CO2 140 grams per uh, kilo, uh, kilometer. And uh, they will move to CO2 120 gram kilometer regulations uh, starting in 2012. Okay, very uh, tough target as shown here. <coughs> okay, in the States, uh, they take a corporate average fuel economy, we call it the CAFE. Okay, and the CAFE will be uh, revised in the very near future, as shown here. And uh, President Bush is, uh, has a big announcement that uh, uh, the states will take a 20 in 10 policy. It means uh, the gasoline consum uh, consumption is, uh, will be reduced by 20% in the next 10 years, introducing biofuel, bioethanol, and also the improvement of the vehicle efficiency. Okay? This is a very uh, high target. 
Okay. And uh, in Japan, looking at the 2030, we will reduce CO2 emissions by 30 to 40 percent. Okay. And Euro is a very, very stringent target, as shown here. And California will introduce such stringent regulations apart from federal fuel economy standard, as you may know. <coughs> okay. And uh, speaking of uh, Japanese uh, passenger car uh, fuel economy standard, we will achieve uh, 20. 3.5% improvement uh, by the year uh, 2015. Okay, uh, depending on the vehicle weight, as shown here. So uh, this table shows uh, a variety of technologies to improve fuel economy. Okay, direct injection hybridization, mirror cycle, and uh, downsizing with uh, uh, turbocharging, and also variable valve mechanism, and modulated displacement, and so on. <coughs> okay, this is uh, typical examples, uh, examples including direct injection, gasoline engine, variable timing, and CVT. Continuously variable transmission is very, very efficient. Okay. Uh, this is the f a very, very <coughs> advanced uh, concept, uh, direct injection gasoline engine developed by Volkswagen. This <coughs> engine has a direct injection system and turbocharging system as well, and uh, very, very uh, efficient uh, transmissions as shown here. Okay. So uh, the engine displacement is very small because it is turbocharged. Okay. And this engine is also turbocharged, uh, developed by Mazda. And this is, engine is very, very small, uh, like uh, Volkswagen's TSI engine, as shown here. Okay, this is a Mercedes-Benz HCCI Dizotto engine. Dizotto means diesel and auto. It's a, diff uh, a combination of HCCI and ordinary gasoline uh, combustion. Uh, it means uh, spark united engine, okay? Very unique engine, and this engine utilizes uh, mild hybrid. I will talk about mild hybrid later, but uh, it is a uh, very, very complicated system, uh, including var uh, variable compression and uh, var variable geometry turbocharger and variable valve timing. And at the light load, the HCCI combustion is utilized to reduce NOx, okay, to achieving the very low temperature combustion. Okay, the combustion process are compared, and a very very lean combustion can be achieved by utilizing HCCI concept. As shown here, NOx level is very, very low compared to the ordinary uh, combustion. Okay, so in summary, we will uh, improve combustion technology, after treatment technology, and fuel technology as well. Three technologies are essential to achieve low emission and high efficiency at the same time. And uh, such key component technology must be developed. And the, we have to optimize the very, very complicated combination of such components to achieve low emission and high efficiency at the same time. 
Okay, and this uh, figure compares uh, uh, direct injection diesel engine and stoichiometric burn engine, stoichiometric burn direct injection and lean burn direct injection in terms of NOx and CO2. As you can see, diesel engine and lean burn engine have to reduce NOx more, keeping the high efficiency. Okay, uh, let me change the subject. This is uh, this uh, figure shows the effect of resistance parameters on required energy for the vehicle. Okay, as you can see, the reduction of the vehicle weight is very very uh, effective to reduce required energy. To achieve such uh, lightweight uh, vehicle, high tension steel and aluminum and plastics are very useful. Okay? But uh, I think a high tension steel is the most uh, promising technology to reduce uh, vehicle weight at a reasonable cost, in incremental cost. Okay? And uh, we are discussing a lot about uh, the future safety for lightweight vehicles. Sometimes a lightweight vehicle is very, very dangerous, okay, because too light. And uh, if you uh, have a, a collision accident, you will be killed if you drive a very lightweight vehicle, okay. So safety issue is a very, very important challenge issue for uh, safety vehicle expert. Okay, so I am proposing a challenging opportunities to develop advanced technologies for lightweight vehicle safety issue, as shown here. Okay, and uh, ultra light steel auto body program has been done, uh, as shown here. Uh, three, uh, 33 steel manufacturers got together to reduce uh, the vehicle weight, okay? They have succeeded in reducing the vehicle weight uh, by 20 to 30 percent and improving the uh, fuel economy by 20 percent or so, okay? This is a lightweight uh, vehicle uh, like Prius, okay? The vehicle weight is only 420 kilograms, very lightweight, and the fuel economy is 140 mi miles per gallon. Very, very efficient. Using uh, using uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastics, very lightweight. Okay, and using a very small engine. Okay, speaking of uh, electric vehicles, uh, we have a, a micro uh, electric vehicles and hybrid uh, vehicles and also fuel cell vehicles. Okay, and uh, such advanced technology are required and uh, uh, developed, are uh, being developed. Okay, for such vehicles. Uh, in the past, we expected uh, the future, bright future of ordinary EVs, but the ordinary the EVs in California uh, to m comply with uh, zero emission vehicle standard, but uh, they are disappearing at the moment, right? So, uh, because uh, uh, ordinary EVs are suffering, were suffering from heavy uh, weight, of the battery unit and uh, long time recharging, okay? So, and very expensive for replacement of the battery with a new one. This is the, the advanced, very many type uh, EVs uh, developed by Mitsubishi using a lithium ion battery. Uh, this battery uh, technology is a very, very important technology to carry uh, sufficient energy and 
providing uh, high power, as shown here. And the running cost is very, very cheap, as shown here. Okay, because uh, if you can take a night time recharge, the cost will be one ninth of the gasoline a vehicle, as shown here. Okay, and CO2 emission is very low, as shown here. Because in Japan, 30% uh, of electricity is generated by nuclear power. Okay, so we can reduce CO2 by 30% or more. Okay, and in our laboratory, we have uh, developed such many bus uh, equipped with uh, motor and battery. Okay, this uh, minibus has a inductive power transfer system uh, without uh, using any plug-in system. Okay. So it's very convenient system, and it has only a very small battery unit. Okay. This is an uh, inductive charging system, and this is located under the floor. Okay. While stopping the vehicle, the electric charging will take place. Okay. Very for very spending very short time. As shown here. Okay, speaking of uh, hybrid system, there are three different kinds of hybrid system as shown here. Okay, parallel system is sometimes called mild hybrid. Okay, and the engine and motor is connected directly to generate electricity, and also uh, it can drive the vehicle. Okay, and series type is a combination of engine and generator, and the engine is used only for electricity generation, okay? And the uh, series parallel uh, type is shown here, okay? And uh, there are uh, some advantages and disadvantages for microhybrid, mild hybrid, and full hybrid system, okay? Uh, motor is used for power generation, as shown here. And uh, it is a very important uh, function. Engine stop, start, and stop okay, a function. And the regenerative braking is, uh, can be used for these different type of hybrid uh, types, as shown here. And this is... Uh, What's the future vehicle? Uh, we have developed such a uh, very efficient hybrid system shown here. We used carbon reinforced plastics body, okay, using ion battery unit and very small engine as well. Okay, this is uh, the uh, what's the vehicle's engine. This. Uh, Letter W means the initial of our university's name, W. <laughs> Very efficient, uh, almost uh, uh, 80 miles per gallon is achieved. Okay, this is a blue tech hybrid uh, developed by Mercedes Benz. This is, is a modification of S320 utilizing. Uh, Bluetech, uh, urea SCR system, and micro hybrid. Very efficient. And this is a plug-in hybrid uh, vehicle developed by Toyota, uh, based on uh, Prius. Okay, it has another set of uh, nickel hydride uh, battery unit, as shown here. Okay. This is uh, Volvo's recharge system, recharge concept car. Uh, it has a plug-in type seated hybrid system, okay, shown here. Very efficient vehicle. Uh, equipped with uh, lithium-ion uh, battery unit, shown here. 
Okay, this is uh, Oppo's concept sporty EVs, E-Flex. And uh, it has a series hybrid uh, system with a 1.3 liter diesel engine. And it has a pair of Segway. Okay, so you can enjoy uh, Segway with your girlfriend or boyfriend stopping at the uh, in that of the some forest or something uh, off road <laughs> area, but uh, be careful. It runs only twenty three kilometers, so you have to go uh, ten kilometers away, and you have to return. Do you understand? Okay. So uh, this is. Uh, summary of uh, the trade-off of increased cost and improved fuel economy uh, in terms of uh, micro-hybrid, mild-hybrid, uh, and full-hybrid, okay, uh, to be used for gasoline vehicles and diesel vehicles, okay. And development of major components are shown here. We need a uh, advanced uh, motor and ba battery unit, and DC-DC converter as well, and other electronics. Okay. And incremental costs must be uh, considered, as shown here. Okay. Diesel engine is uh, more efficient than gasoline engine, okay. but uh, the diesel engine is a little bit expensive. So we have to consider the trade-off cost and the fuel efficiency, okay, as shown here, okay. And uh, uh, the Japanese government has established uh, the future target for developing lithium-ion batteries uh, for uh, vehicle applications, as shown here. Uh, the cost must be drastically reduced in the future, as shown here. And uh, the performance of the battery have to be improved uh, by 50% uh, uh, by the year 2015. It's a very, very uh, tough target to be achieved. But the uh, battery industry and uh, national laboratory are working very hard on this uh, target, as shown here. Okay. And speaking of the future motor vehicle fuel, we have some options, including biomass fuel, electricity, natural gas, and so on. Okay? But uh, flexibility, flexible, flexibly blendable, and compatibility with conventional fuels are very essential issue. Okay? And adaptive to existing refueling infrastructures is also a very important issue, as shown here. Okay. Okay. Let me introduce some uh, Japan hydrogen and fuel cell program. Okay. We have uh, ten refueling stations for hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicle, as shown here. Okay. We have such different type of uh, fuel cell vehicles tested on the road. Okay. GM uh, is now providing uh, hydrogen three uh, for metropolitan area in uh, Japan. Okay. And uh, we are carefully comparing the uh, CO two emissions, okay, of these vehicles and. Uh, conventional vehicles as well, such as gasoline vehicle and gasoline hybrid and diesel and diesel hybrid and CNG vehicles. And uh, as you can see, battery uh, uh, EVs are the most efficient and the lowest CO2 emission vehicle, as shown here. Okay. Okay, uh, let me uh, talk about a little bit about biomass fuel. Okay, you can get uh, bioethanol from different sources as shown here. 
and uh, sugar, starch, or cellul uh, cellulose uh, can be used for uh, production of ethanol, as shown here. Okay, and Honda and Wright has uh, developed Wright strain. This is a very unique strain to avoid uh, inhibition during fermentation. So uh, it can produce bioethanol very efficiently uh, using the continuous uh, processes of uh, ethanol production, as shown here. Okay, speaking of biodiesel, again, we have different type of sources as shown here. Okay, rapeseed in Europe, uh, palm oil in uh, Asian uh, area, countries, okay, and soybeans in the States and in Brazil as well for diesel uh, fuel. Okay. okay, this is a, a chemical reaction uh, mechanism. Uh, to produce uh, diesel, uh, biodiesel, we need methanol, okay? And we get a byproduct, glycerin. So it's a, a little bit problem for us because methanol is not a biofuel at the moment, right? So we have to produce methanol using natural gas or some other fossil fuels, okay? So uh, we can replace uh, such vegetable oils, uh, oxygen, with hydrogen uh, using such process uh, developed by Nippon Oil and Toyota. This is very useful uh, process because you cannot, uh, you don't have to add palm oils, uh, diesel, uh, biodiesel, and you can utilize uh, such uh, hydrocarbons very similar to diesel fuel, having a very high cetane number, okay? And this is a future advanced process to produce diesel fuel utilizing such biomass, uh, uh, including crops, wood, grass, and waste, as shown here. Gasification process and the Fischer Tropsch method are used for producing such uh, hydrocarbon fuel, very similar to diesel fuel, as shown here. Uh, for such uh, development, Nestle and Koren in Germany and IS, uh, AIST in Japan are working very hard to develop to complete such processes, okay? In the States, uh, some companies are developing such uh, processes to produce diesel fuel, okay? Okay, uh, I'm running out of time, so uh, I would like to skip my, uh, some slide, but uh, this is very important uh, trend because uh, it is predicted that CO emission in the global transportation sector will be increased up to three times in 2050. So we have to carefully reduce CO2 emissions in the transportation sector, okay? Reducing CO2 emissions uh, emitted, I mean, uh, by, emitted from uh, motor vehicles shown here. And uh, world energy demand in the transportation sector will be continuously increasing in the future, as shown here, okay, 20% or 25%. So we have some options for fuels for such vehicles, okay? We will have three, uh, four types of vehicles, including SI engine vehicles, uh, compression emission engine vehicle and fuel cell vehicle and electric vehicle. And we have to carefully select the better fuel for the future f fuels, right? As shown here. And uh, in Japan, 
we are uh, working on a very important uh, research program, including electricity and battery, hydrogen fuel cell, and clean diesel, biofuels, and human-friendly mo mobility systems okay, to achieve uh, the target of, uh, of uh, reducing dependency of vehicle fuels on oil less than uh, 80% and improving overall efficiency uh, by 30% or more. Okay. And uh, this uh, figure uh, compares the emissions of CO2. Uh, the baseline is uh, present gasoline vehicle, 100%. And in the future, we will be able to reduce uh, CO2 emissions using such advanced technology. Okay. And eventually, looking at the up to the year 2030 and beyond, we will be able to reduce CO2 emissions in the transportation sector by 70%. 70%, okay? We, if we can utilize such concept, okay? We will be, we will have to improve fuel economy by using efficient power systems, hybridization, vehicle weight reduction. And we have to uh, use uh, non-oil fuels and energies, uh, including electricity, biofuels, and uh, carbon capture and storage-based fuel. Okay. And also, we have to CO2 emission more by improving the use of the vehicle, okay? We have to change the way we use the vehicle in the future, uh, okay? Introducing uh, transportation demand management, intelligent transport systems, and model shift from the vehicle to, the, uh, to railway transportation as well, okay? And uh, again, we have to change our li car lifestyle, okay? So looking at the f uh, future trend associated with uh, emissions and uh, alternative fuels and global warming, uh, as you can see, we will be able to overcome air pollution issues around 2010 or later. Okay? Developed country will be late behind us. Okay? But uh, the developing countries or motorizing country will need some alternative fuels, like vegetable oil or biomass fuels. Okay? And global warming issue will be more and more important in the near future. Okay? Thank you very much for your kind attention. Let's develop. Uh, environmental friendly research for sustainable mobility. Professor Daisho, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful overview and, and a review of some of your own work. Um, I'm sure there are lots of questions here, and uh, I believe we have another microphone here for people to ask questions. Um, just a note, the, we weren't able to print out the first half of your uh, presentation, but they will be available on the Citrus website, all the slides, so anyone can go to them and download them themselves. So are there any questions? Um, I was wondering um, how, this, how in Japanese society and um, government, the relationship between government and business um, and how how it, um, something like this moves forward, how it's different than the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, uh, for example, in order to establish uh, new regulations associated with emissions or fuel economy, we discuss a lot uh, between, uh, we have a very severe discussion between industry and government and uh, neutral uh, 
advisor like me, okay? And uh, we had an interview, technical interview, and uh, very, very uh, detailed discussion, looking at the, uh, looking at to the future technologies to be developed, okay? And eventually we determine the, the emission level or fuel economy standard level, okay? So it's a very tough discussion between industry, government, and uh, neutral advisors. Okay, but uh, in the states and Euro in Europe, they uh, the government has its own overview or perspective on the future fuel regulations or emissions regulation. Right, so no discussion between industry and the government uh, a different way. you talked about uh, using urea for pollution control yes and uh, I was wondering on those systems let's say the urea runs out I assume the engine is capable of running it'll just pollute mm -hmm. and uh, so I wonder if, if you're if you would think of shutting down the engine with, uh, to right. enforce uh, uh, you, the pollution control or you'd leave would you leave someone stranded in the uh -huh. desert or because the urea tank is empty or what, what kind of system <laughs> yes. would you use yes for it's a very huge this? Problem in the state and also in Japan and in Europe, right? And uh, we are introducing OBD system, onboard diagnostic system, okay? And uh, you get a warning, okay, uh, saying that uh, the urea solution is uh, uh, running out. And uh, uh, automatically, the vehicle speed is uh, reduced if you, uh, if you, uh, the uh, urea tank uh, uh, solution is running out. Okay, it's a very important issue. Yes. Hi, um, I have two quick questions. One with the efficient diesel vehicles, um, the amount of pollutants by weight is reduced, grams per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's a different distribution in terms of the particulate size because there's a health mm -hmm. concern with small mm -hmm. particles? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a very big uh, issue. And as you may know, uh, in Europe, they will regulate the particle number. Uh, because you, you can know? have many more tiny particles which yes. have different health effects and they will yes. weigh much less. So yes, it's we call it a nanoparticle, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, we, uh, in Europe, the nanoparticle uh, will be regulated in terms of number as shown here, okay? Because it's, it is very, uh, more harmful than the larger size of the particle. So they will be regulated in terms of number as shown here, okay? Yeah, I was just wondering in terms of the new technologies new technology, that are strongly okay. expected, is, is there a different characteristic being seen? Right. Or is that not a yeah. concern? Yeah, but uh, uh, at the moment uh, we can effectively reduce such a nanoparticle by using uh, DPF, okay? BTA has a very larger pore, but it can catch the nanoparticle, okay, very efficiently. We have uh, some evidence for that. So, uh, in Europe, uh, they regulate the number of the nanoparticle, but it's okay because uh, if DPF is used, okay. So it can be controlled. Yes. Okay, that's very good. Yes. Um, th the other question. This is partly a comment maybe. I agree with you about the need to reduce the automobile lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I would add to the transportation demand management, also transportation and land use structure, how we organize cities and the flow of goods. Mm -hmm. And one type of technology, which is now an old technology, but is very promising in terms of energy efficiency and public health benefits is direct drive electricity. You mentioned trains, but um, there is the trolley bus is another form, it's more flexible and it can also right. transition to trains. Yes. It's more viable depending on the right. structure of the land use, right. but do you look at that at all or do yeah. uh, in terms in of viability? In Japan, we have some such system, a Torori system, and also we have uh, 
introducing uh, LRT. Do you know? Yes, light, light, light rail uh, transit. Light uh, sure. transit uh, system is introduced in some cities mm -hmm. to be more efficient. But the, um, obviously, w uh, you are reducing, y you can run these vehicles from renewables directly. Yes. They're very energy efficient, and you're removing the need for uh, so many batteries and engines. Yes. So you have more space. Also, because it's direct electricity, you have very fast torque, so you can uh -huh. Cover ground faster. You need fewer vehicles, fewer drivers, and they last longer, less maintenance. Yes. But um, they used to be very widespread, and then they uh -huh. were transitioned from. But I'm uh -huh. thinking that maybe they have potential to, for widespread use, not only for public transport, but for but goods for movement uh -huh. in the future as people are organizing to uh, use less energy and to reduce carbon emissions. Yes. So I'm just wondering if you, yeah. what you think about that? Yeah, uh, we. Uh, uh, developing lithium ion battery unit, okay? Yeah. Very efficient and uh, it has a very high energy density and power density as well. So we are focusing for that. And also, uh, as I told you, uh, plug in hybrid or uh, inductive recharging system will be introduced, okay, on the road uh, test uh, to start with, okay? <laughs> And uh, we will ev evaluate uh, the performance of such systems, okay? okay. And comparing uh, the uh, conventional system, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, uh, electricity have to be generated using, uh, hopefully, uh, using uh, renewables, right? But still, you're removing the pollution from the city. Yes. That's one method, and you can... Reduce the... Right. Right. Uh huh. Potentially more efficient at the power plant. Right. Right. Coal or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, okay. Uh, um, I told as I told you. Okay. Uh, gasoline vehicles are becoming uh, almost zero emission vehicle, as you may know, utilizing advanced uh, catalytic converter and electronics and fueling system, okay? And for example, in Tokyo and in Los Angeles, if you drive a gasoline vehicle, you can reduce air uh, hydrocarbon in the air because tailpipe emissions uh, hydrocarbon is much lower than the air, HC uh, hydrocarbon con uh, concentrations, okay? So very low emission vehicle. So the problem is the efficiency and the consumption of the energy so using fossil fuel or using uh, renewables. So sticking with uh, internal combustion engines, um, you, I'm interested in biofuels, and you talked about the importance of making them blendable and look yes. like petroleum-based ones. Right. But for biology, it's a lot easier to make particular compounds. Um, is it going to be possible or is it even necessary mm -hmm. to change the engines if you just have two or three long carbons, you know, a, a, a 17 and an 18, as opposed to the complex mix you get from petroleum? Mm -hmm. uh, engine requires a certain number or octane number. That's all. So you can uh, produce any kind of fuel. So if we meet that, we don't have to make it look like petroleum-based fuel. Oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> but, uh, and also we can utilize uh, existing infrastructure, right? It's very important, right? How many refueling stations in the States? Okay, we have, in Japan, we have uh, almost uh, 50,000 gasoline and uh, diesel fuel stations, right? So it, it's very useful, it's very convenient to add alternative fuel to conventional fuels, right? Mixed or but simply 100% uh, uh, synthesized oil, it's okay. If you can keep the uh, octane number or certain number at the appropriate level for the engine, okay? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, so if I have a bug that spits out octane, uh -huh. actual octane, um, you know, you can either blend it Yes. And sell it to refinery or blend it, or can we just run a car on it? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so if it's all right to just run a car on it, mm -hmm. uh, then we're getting a lot closer to a true biofuel. Mm -hmm. People are concerned even today about the use of hybrid uh, batteries uh -huh. and the fact that they are uh -huh. not easily refurbished or recycled. Uh -huh. In the future, do you see that as being a problem yeah. also to the environment? Yeah. Uh, in Japan, we are creating a recycle system, okay, uh, using the dealer uh, shop and also uh, recycle uh, industry, okay. So it will be not a, a big problem in the future, okay. Mm -hmm. You are talking about the lithium ion battery or nickel hydro? Both? Both, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we have a recycle system. Okay, so it's no uh, problem at all. Mm. Okay? Because you can reutilize such uh, precious metals like nickel hydride and lithium ion. Lithium, right? We'll have one more uh, question and then invite you to speak with Professor Daisho at the reception out Yes, uh, enjoying California wine. <laughs> um, the, uh, the stopping and starting that happens like in the Prius gasoline engine where it stops all the time and starts, is that more difficult to achieve with a, a diesel engine? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, the uh, engine, uh, diesel engine compression is much higher than gasoline engine. But you can utilize uh, Valve, a variable valve uh, timing control. So you can reduce the compression ratio, and also then you can utilize uh, integrated start and alternator system, okay? Uh, some uh, Japanese automakers have achieved such system for hybrid system, okay? One more. <coughs> I have one question. Uh, sounds uh, you have the great research laboratory in Waseda. Mm -hmm. So how many students do you have? 50. And, uh, 50? Yes. Oh, great number. So can you accept somebody smart student from Berkeley to your <laughs> laboratory? Yeah. <laughs> we have to uh, prepare extra desk and chairs. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank please, you. everybody, please give another round. Thank you.